Well, as we continue on uh, recognizing um, Memorial Day as we go into this weekend, those who are serving and those who have served, I am really honored to have in the studio with me today a good friend, Earl Tyerman. Uh, he is a, a gentleman that experienced the Battle of the Bulge. He landed on a Utah Beach on D-Day, and he has quite a story to tell. And uh, first of all, Earl, can I say thank you for your service and your bravery, and thank you for being with us today. Good to see you again. Well, uh, both ways, that's a privilege <laughs> to have been in the service and to be here, too. Now, uh, 88 go, or 87 going on 88, and as you look back, uh, clear back to the Battle of the Bulge, uh, can you believe today what the military has to work with and what you didn't have in those days? Oh, well, <laughs> on, a, on a cloudy, foggy day in the Battle of the Bulge, uh, we couldn't see... Uh, but just a few yards, <clears throat> and we could hear all the explosions from the art, German artillery, uh, but we had no plane cover, whereas nowadays, uh, with the uh, radar, right. and GPS, uh, the, and, the planes can yeah. come in in the deepest fog and deepest snow and pinpoint targets yeah. that we couldn't possibly, for six weeks, we never could see any more than 50 yards away. All right. Now, D-Day was uh, in the Battle of the Bulge. It was pretty much known for its cold weather. It was freezing cold in that fog. Well, uh, in fact, many men froze to death. We lost, well, we had total 90,000 casualties in six weeks, wow. but probably 10 percent were uh, men that they got in their foxholes, went to sleep, and froze to death during the night. Wow. Uh, and then the medics would pick them up in the morning, just like an ice cube, s frozen solid. Wow. Now, how long did you have to uh, wait where you were? Now, you were on Utah Beach. How yeah. long did you have to literally live in those conditions before uh, air reinforcement came in? Six weeks. Six weeks. And there you were, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Yes. And uh, running out of food and ammunition. Yeah. And they couldn't get supplies to you. No. So how did you manage that? How did you know what you had and what you may need? <laughs> we knew it was bad, and it was probably going to get worse unless the weather cleared. So what little we had, we portioned, uh, which wasn't much. Uh, in some days, two or three uh, uh, biscuits about like soda crackers. Wow. And a little uh, three-ounce can of chopped pork would make last two days. Wow. Uh, so I, I lost 20-some pounds in, in six weeks. Uh, wow. All right, tell us about when the fog lift and you were given the command to go. What happened? Hello. All the Christians, at that particular time I wasn't a Christian, but I knew the Lord. Yeah. So it was praise God. Yeah. <laughs> praise God. You know, he's answering prayer. And just within hours after the fog lifted, uh, B-19s B came in and dropped bombs on uh, the railroad depots and uh, the tank formations, uh, P-38 fighter planes come in, and just in one day's time, they just, just wiped them all out. Uh, the, the largest air invasion of its kind, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. We, I think we have a picture of you uh, just before you were deployed. Uh, you're a young man then. Uh, here's the picture here. Yes. Uh, there it is up on the screen now. How old <coughs> were you there? Uh, 18. 18. And what are you holding in your hand there? <laughs> M1 Grand Rifle. That was my closest friend outside of, yeah. of the Lord. That was my closest friend. I was unattached and uh, raring to go for the military. Now, you're saying of all the pieces of equipment that you had during uh, the Battle of the Bulge, 
uh, the one thing that the American troops had that was superior was this M1 rifle. M1 rifle was the best rifle of any country in the world. Okay, so that was, and, and then uh, that's me, that's the particular picture is the day that I received my expert medal for a score of 99 out of a possible 100. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay, uh, just to kind of get a perspective, you have a very rare picture of three generals. I want to put it up on the screen here and let our uh, viewers who are watching on the Dev TV see this. I yes. recognized the one in the middle as Eisenhower, and who are the other two? Uh, on Eisenhower's left, on his left, is uh, General Bradley, Omar Bradley. Okay. And on the right is uh, Joseph Collins, who was my direct commander of 7th Corps, 1st Army. And uh, he, later be he later became uh, a five-star general and took Eisenhower's place as chief of staff. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, what do you remember most of that battle and perhaps the day the fog lift? What, what, what do you remember most? I, I, there's a lot of particular moments that, that I don't really recall, but that one particular moment was I'm alive and, and I got so many friends that were killed. My thought was, this is before I really knew the Lord, yeah. was why not, not why me, but why not me? Mm -hmm. If I made it this far, and now the Battle of the Bulge is over, I, that was a victory to me. I'm, I'm going home. That's when I knew I was going home. Wow. I don't think even today we can get our head around that particular battle. Uh, you said 90,000 casualties. casualties. I mean, that is a number that we can't process yeah, about through our— 1,600 a day. That's unbelievable. I know it's, you know, it's it's hard to, well, uh, like I, I'd mentioned before, it, it gets to the point you never get over it, yeah. but you have to learn how to <clears throat> go through it. You have to learn how to step over bodies without knowing who they are, where they are, how it happened. Because you had to keep moving. Yeah. Was it a matter of, now you said something, uh, you were fighting not for a matter of control, but you were fighting for liberty. There yes. was something in the American <clears throat> soul of yeah. that era, your era, yeah. that you fought with the least amount of equipment, you yes. just didn't have it, right. and you would step over body and keep going forward. What yes. was that in your heart? That, what was that? Well, we looked at a demon-possessed dictator, Hitler, and we, we know that the soldiers that were fighting for Germany were fighting for their Fuhrer. Mm -hmm. And just as the Japanese were fighting for their emperor, we were fighting for freedom, yeah. for liberty, for, for morality, and, and dead set against the evil that we were faced with. You know, few generations have been given the responsibility to do that. Yes. Uh, your generation was given the responsibility right. to fight and protect liberty. Yes. Here we are, these many years later, and we're having to fight it in a whole new way. <clears throat> yes. How do you view that? How do you view what you fought and stepped over your own servicemen and countrymen Today, we seem to be fighting this thing within the walls of America in a whole nother level. Uh, it's hard for me to understand the, the hearts of people today in high places that uh, are more concerned in economic values rather than moral values. Uh, in my in my time growing up, my country was so important to me, and when we entered the war before I went, was old enough to go in, 
if we went to a movie, they they always showed a newsreel. Right. And when President Roosevelt was shown, sometimes in a, in his wheelchair, and speak, the whole audience would stand, stood, yeah. and applauded. Yeah. Now that that's Americanism. That's Americanism. Yeah, we we don't have that anymore. Uh, I'm sad. Yes. Um, and I, I want to talk to you about that someday. But for the sake of time, we have one more picture I want to show our audience. This is you liberating a concentration camp. Yes. And this this picture might be a little hard for some to look at, but all those are bodies. Thirty. In that particular scene, there's 3,500 bodies there, and then there's another. 2,500 that were stacked up, ready to go into ovens and grave into uh, mass graves, bulldozed, yeah. max, yeah, mass maximum gra grave. Now, if you look to the right of that picture, those who are looking, you'll see kind of like a flag or a white, like a cot thing. Uh, uh, that is, you are standing in front of that. Is that correct? I was just taking a, a step forward there, yeah, okay, with okay. that white line across. Right line, that is you there. And then off to your right is who? Laura Bush's dad. Laura Bush's dad. Yes. And uh, you knew him, and uh, and she, you still get some correspondence from her. Yes, I, I sent her this very picture because she had mentioned one time on, on uh, television that her father said the hardest part of the war was the liberation of Nordhausen death camp. And so I had this original Signal Corps picture. So I got the permission, and I sent her a copy, and she wrote me a letter back hmm. thanking me for it. And then we've corresponded a few times since then. Was that the hardest part of the war for you? It's the it. one that gave me the nightmares for years afterwards, yeah. I see, again, uh, this is a picture we can't get our head around. Uh, it looked like it just came from another world, another yes. time zone. It was. You know, actually, that that it's almost like a dream world. You know, people can't... I go to high schools, or, or like I went to... You know, a Cascade Christian school. Mm -hmm. I sh I show this picture, and the children say, "It really did happen." Yeah. See, th they weren't sure, yeah. and and you see almost hundred percent tears that reaches people's hearts. Well, yeah. that stayed, you know, here in me for almost 10 years, I, I sleep on the couch rather than in bed because I I was so restless that I didn't want to keep my wife awake. She would never complain, but I didn't want to. So, But uh, wow. it's something, you can't erase this kind of stuff. No, you can't. Uh, but it was, again, It what was in you and your fellow servicemen's hearts and your your spirit, the, the something inside of you, that tenacity, that tenacious. Yeah. Uh, we got to go, and we are fighting for liberty here. We are. It is good against evil. It is. Oh yeah. The, it is the good spirit against the bad spirit. Yeah, you give give everything you got in order to keep what you have. You give it everything you got in order to keep what you have. Yes, and and, and you go back. Like I go back, I think, uh, when I was a teenager, yeah. the the morality was it's so was different. up. Yeah. Yeah. I never once heard of a pe person being arrested in high school. Yeah. No. Well, Earl, I, we're out of time, but uh, thank you for sharing with us today. Uh, this is so meaningful. Thank you for your service again. And I hope thank for you. many more Memorial Days you're around, and uh, times in the future we can get you back and, um, and talk more about this. Well, I thank you, and I pray for all those widows and widowers that are out there. Okay, thank you. Thank we love you. you. God bless you. All right, thank you for joining us. Uh, have a safe uh, Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. Fly your flag and pray for our troops.